Hi all. Excuse my, my voice, I have a bit of a cold. But this is the explanations video for my Allegro roller coaster. Which, uh, I've taken all the, all the platforms and stuff off to make it easier to see things. None of the mechanisms on their own are actually that complicated. It's just that when you put them together, they, uh, they make this. Hi, Editor Care here. It's three hours later and I've just realised that I say all the gear ratios the wrong way round. So, if I say 3 to 1, I really mean 1 to 3. Alright, thanks, bye. So, uh, let's, uh, we'll start with the winch base. This is just a pretty standard mechanism. The string comes and wraps around this drum. The, this is the motor. This is an eighth to an eight tooth gear. This is a twenty four tooth gear, so it's a three to one reduction. So this spins uh, three times for this one to spin once, and this is a clutch gear, so that when the catch car here hits uh, hits this buffer, it puts strain on this. But because of this gear, it allows the the drum to slip while the motor doesn't move. Uh, that's, that's a, a little, little feature. After it comes out of the winch, the cable comes up here, uh, across this pulley, uh, nestled in that support there, uh, up to the end, where it goes through this one, and then up round the bill wheel, and then finally to the catch car. And that lets it move like this. The catch car isn't that complicated, the wheelbase is just uh, two road wheels with an upstop pad in the middle to keep it coming off the track, and then uh, two smaller guide wheels on either side to keep things smooth. And then there's this big member here, which is the catching part of the catch car. Now for the catching, these little arms here get, uh, get pushed up by these slats, and then this little nub in here uh, gets caught on this, which then pulls it up. And then now this is under these slats, which just uh, push it out of the way to let it pass. Up at the top of the catch car lift here, there is this, uh, this sticky out bit here which uh, pushes this bit on the catch car and releases it, which lets the, the train go, um, as seen here. Let's talk a bit more about the train itself. There are five wheel assemblies, two on this side, two on the other, and then the catch car one, but this is a bit irrelevant for now. Each of the wheel assemblies has two road wheels, a guide wheel, which you would normally have two, but since the track doesn't turn or twist, you can get away with one. And then two upstop pads to keep it lifting off the track. And then each wheel of bogey independently uh, can pitch up and down, which uh, helps make the ride nice and smooth. It gets kind of dusty in my room, so every so often you have to take the wheel assemblies apart and clean the wheels and oil the wheel assemblies. Uh, cause it's to make it run faster, cause it won't reach the chain lift without them. These here are the drive tires, and they help push the train backwards and forwards when they're in the station. It's just three wheels connected by, uh, these idler gears here. If a gear isn't powered or powering anything, then, then it's called an idler. This is the motor for a drive tire. Um, the drive tires need to go really slow. So this is a 1 to 8 reduction, because this is an 8 tooth gear, and in there is a, is a worm gear, which you can't really see, but I'll show one on screen now, which just has one tooth that keeps turning round and round. This here, connecting it to the actual thing, is a, it's called a carden shaft, and this means that I can have the motor off to the side to make room for this different mechanism. These two joints here are called universal joints, and each of them can turn up to 45 degrees. And this device here makes it so that the shaft can vary in length, 
because the length I have here isn't an exact like Lego beam length and also it needs to move up and down as the drive tires move up and down. Um, it probably isn't necessary because the length doesn't change that much but it's, it's good practice. What causes these drive tires to move up and down is a cam where there's a little ramp on this lever um, and it pushes it up in uh, three separate places uh, here, here and about here and that just makes it so that it stays nice and even when you lift it up and the tires have to lift up and down to let the car move freely past it when it's uh, when it's in free fall. This here is the chain motor um, and it has a a 1 to 6 ratio when it's connected to the chain because there's a 3 to 1 ratio here because there's an 8 tooth gear and a 24 tooth gear and another 8 tooth and 24 tooth here uh, and so they stack and this is connected to the chain gear here and it, uh, it makes the chain go to help the train interface with the chain are these two chain dogs here which are uh, they're just, they're held down by gravity, and they latch onto the chain. It's kind of hard to see, but you can, you can see them latching onto the chain here. And the reason they're on a hinge, and not just fixed, is, be, is so that the train can run up and catch onto it. It doesn't just stop. But then the train can't... The train can't be let down by it. It can only go up. Which is what the chain drop mechanism is for. There is enough friction in this joint here so that when the chain drives backwards, the chain drops. Like this. That's it going upwards. That's downwards. And then it just needs a little extra servo motor here to, to help it back up again. Lastly to do with the chain, this elastic band here is part of the chain tensioner device, which it keeps the chain nice and tight. Because if the chain's not tight, the train has trouble catching onto it. That's pretty much it for all the mechanisms, uh, so here's the controls. This is the chain forwards and backwards, uh, which is just a simple uh, four bar linkage to the, to the actual switch over here, because I didn't want to run wires all the way over to here. This lever controls the drive tires in the station, um, and also the chain re-engage over there. Um, this here controls the catch car up and down, and this controls the drive tires engaging and re-engaging. Uh, so I'll just I'll just run it properly now. Uh, it's good to set the set the chain running at the start, and then there's the catch car coming down. And it stays here. And then engage the drive tires, push the train back, latch onto it with that, disengage the drive tires, that's important. Wait for this to go up here. Sorry, I missed that. Wait for it to get to the top of the chain. Reverse and catch it with the drive tires again and scooch it forward to where it was and that's that's pretty much it I did record a forwards and reverse POV so here you are this is just um, lighter weeks than a phone for video and is that the main advantage? yeah and smaller and easy to mount
that's pretty much it for this. Thanks for watching. Bye.